Hello, everyone. I'm Angeline Chia Major, and I'm from Liberia. I am an early childhood educator. Yes, and I love being an educator. Yes. Uh, so today, my presentation is all about my initiative that I've created in Liberia to create the opportunity for young children to have access to quality education. <laughs> And also about my journey of becoming an educator in Liberia. Yeah. So just give me a minute. Let me see what I can share my screen. Uh, Sounds good. Mm. Do you know where the share is or it just not letting you share? Oh, there you go. We see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so like I said, I'm Angeline Yvonne and I'm the co-founder for Canova International School. So uh, Canova International School is an uh, initiative that um, helps less fortunate children and cater to their needs, like uh, providing quality education for them to have access to quality education. So be real. Uh, early childhood education has been a huge challenge. Most people who can afford for this kind of education are people who have money or people who uh, are well equipped. But at Canova, we cater to less fortunate children, children of financial background, low income children. We create the opportunity to save learning environment access to quality education, a loving and play-based environment where children can feel at home and engage in other activities. So to solve one of the major problems that Liberia is faced with, like families struggling to afford to send their children to school, limiting children of their future opportunities, that's how a friend and I came together and started to work on over where we started from my home we started from my living room we started catering to few children in the communities and we started to read books to them help them and parents started seeing the need that their children were still meeting up with their education despite they didn't have the money so more parents started sending their children so we thought about it because my home was getting more smaller for them so we got a place, we rented, and we start catering to children from two years old to fourth grade. So last year was our first year. We piloted this project and it was so successful. We started with two children and ended last year with uh, 30. And just last month we we opened and we had Hundred students pulling in. Yes, and that was so much good news for us. And our dedicated volunteers have been doing a whole lot. We have some reading programs, like you can see the kids have been in the library reading. We focus on literacy, we focus on numeracy, we focus on the holistic child development where we do play-based learning. We teach them to read and write. We teach them to pronounce. We teach them different things. And they are so happy being here. In most cases, they don't want to go home because this is one of their saviors environment or space ever. Uh, the picture you see with the building, that was the building we rented uh, last year. And we were able to furnish it. And they took this ship and... Our students love being here. So right now we are undertaking a library project where we create more opportunity for children, even who are not in our surrounding, but after school in other surrounding, they can come over, read, 
and have the opportunity to play and have fun. So we are undertaking a library project that will help students and more children around. So we started reaching out to people for books. We have a mini space right now, even though it's not big, but we are starting from there. And our students love it being there. We do more outdoor activities, more uh, in-house activity. Like you can see this little girl in the, on this picture when she came. She could not uh, read, she could not write, she could not even do anything. And initially, because of her, of her foundation and where she lived, her upbringing, she did not have opportunity to all of these beautiful uh, things. So when she came, she was kind of uh, confused, but now you can see she's so happy, excited, smiling, doing her work. And the last slide is one of our outdoor activities where we use play to teach children. And they love it so much being here at uh, Canova. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. You are. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yes, yeah, so like I was saying, uh, today's presentation is all about um, recognizing a parent in Liberia and solving it, and also how I came into this education field in Liberia. Uh, like everything that I'm doing currently is my own personal story. Growing up with my parents, not having the opportunity to quality education, because they could not afford what we call good school in Liberia. So if you don't have money, your child won't have the opportunity to go to good school or have quality education. So uh, my parents were left with no option but to send me to live with other people, to do chores and to help out with their homework so they could, in exchange, send me to school. So when I graduated from uh, high school, went to college, I thought about it. I'm like, I do not want any other child to experience this, this part, their parents don't have the money. So I thought to do education where I can give back to a lot of children who can I afford, a lot of children who don't have money, but with my own services and expertise, they will still have the opportunity to acquire quality education. And that was how I co-founded with my colleague. And we started Canova Home and later on expand to a three bedroom house. And right now we are still there, but our students have grown. Like we are like 100 plus now. And the space is getting more small every day, but we are grateful that uh, less fortunate children can have this golden opportunity. And I can see so much excitement in their parents' faces that we are creating this means for their children to acquire education. That's part of their financial, social, and religious backgrounds. So uh, Canova, I can say Canova is the solution for Liberia early childhood or, or pre-primary education. Yes, yeah, so we are doing a whole lot and we are grateful. And we will appreciate if anyone wants to partner, anyone wants to donate books, school materials to us, that will be a plus. And our students and our volunteers are going to be so, so excited. Thank you all. Um, I have a question, actually. But uh, first, I would like to... um. This presentation was really wonderful. Seeing how it grew from just being in your living room to having a nice uh, a building to teach students. I find that education is one of the most valuable things a kid ha should have even in their early stages. Uh, my question is, where did um the profits come from? Okay, so uh, at Canova, we... We really do not money from parents because the ability is to give back even when parents cannot afford. So we do more donation, even some of our bonuses. That's why we have volunteers. They are willing to help up. 
they are waiting to work. Some parents, once they see a need to bring in financial support, they do. Then most often we do fundraiser. We do fundraiser where we raise funds, we get donations from even our own parents and community dwellers. So this is a collaborative uh, initiative where everybody come together. The profit is not much, even though it's like a business, but at this point, we are not focusing so much on profit. We just want to maintain this initiative. Um. Also, how can we get in contact with you? Do you have an email, a website or thing? So we can, um, like where to fundraise or where to send yes. maybe some materials? Yes, yeah, so I have an email. I don't know. Uh, I have an email. The school has a website and they have a Facebook page. So I, I don't know how I can send it here. Should what I send is, it through message? You know what? Um, can you show it on your screen and it becomes part of the recording? Can you share your screen and go to the website or go to the Facebook page? And then as people see the video, they'll have it. Oh, right. And you Let have plenty of time to do that. That's really the easiest way to do it. Well, perfect. There's the website you can see, canova.com. Yeah, no. Yes. Let me let me go through it. It's it's not. And I we can look for some jobs while we're at it there, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> uh sorry, I'm trying to tap it in. No, but that's not of do you have a, a way to put your email address on there too? Yes. Uh, okay, because between your it. email address and website, that's plenty to reach you. Unless we can just go to your website. On your website, is there like a contact us? Yes, yes, is there. Because we could do that. Yeah. Okay. I think that'll work. I had a couple of questions for you too, or a couple of comments. All right. Uh, uh, that's all right. Do you want me to close okay. it? Or are you, that's it. You... That's that's it. We are getting there. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. So yeah. when you click on contact us, <clears throat> will it show the email address or will it just be a form to fill out? It will show the email address but I could also tap in my personal and the school email address as well. Okay, because I'm not seeing any email addresses yet. <clears throat> Can you click on that and see what happens? Oh, it shows contacts. Uh, okay, so that's me. There we push. go, there's one of them. That's Vivian's. Okay. Yes, there. this is the school. <laughs> All right, so let me put in my email address as well. Well, there she is right there. Principal at canovaschools.com. Yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. Then I'm going to unshare your screen again, okay? Okay. Now that we have your contact information because Sam might have more questions, but I had a couple of comments I wanted to share with you too. Um, one of the reasons that... Um, I like featuring programs like yours on an innovation show like this. I mean, we know reading isn't necessarily innovative or innovation, but when you teach children to read, they can do anything, be anything and go anywhere because they have that ability through books to do everything and anything. So to me, that's why literacy and learning are just as innovative as coming up with an invention because it opens the world for those kids and allows them to take it as far as they really wanna go. And so I wanna yeah. thank you for that. And then I have another 
comment, you had said, you know, people want to send us supplies. And I know through working with Paul from Paul Care, and I think you know Paul, right? Yes, I know yes. Paul. Yeah. I know from him, I've wanted to send things for a long time. It is almost impossible to send something from where I am in the United States to Liberia without it costing so much more than what you're sending, right? So I have a challenge to anybody out there listening to help us solve this problem. I can get things to donate to you and to Paul's organization and to other places in Liberia and Sierra Leone. It's getting it there is such a problem. But I know somebody has an answer for it. I don't know if it's a, a big organization that can help us get product from one country to Liberia so that we can help support you. Or if it's like a United Way or one of those um, charity organizations that already works in those areas that could send things through their company from different locations so it doesn't cost a fortune to get it there to where it's so great. I mean, if I send you two pounds or 10 pounds of books, it'll cost me 275 US dollars, which is crazy and way more money than the books are worth, right? So we need to find a solution for that. And I'm and I'm asking people that are listening to this today live or that are listening to the recording, help us find a way. And if you can figure it out, write to info at innovationworld.org so that we can partner with these great organizations and get them what they need to help their kids. Yeah, that would be a great thing. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. Do you do any digital learning like with um a screen or are you just traditional? Oh, for now, we are traditional because we don't have the equipment to do the digital learning. But if we do have it, we will love that. Okay. Can you get Wi-Fi there? Or can you get internet so that you can mm -hmm. use those digital products? Yes, we have Wi-Fi at our center. We have Wi-Fi. Oh, very good. Well, that's probably how you're on here today. Yeah. Yes. What are you thinking, Sam? You thinking of ways to um, collect some of those things to get to them? Because uh, I was, I asked that question because I was interested in maybe making a few presentations for the school because I make a lot actually. Yeah, that would be really interesting, I bet. Yes, and our student will love it. You they probably already it. have a bunch of stuff out there, Samuel, because I know that you and the group of students you learn with and your siblings already have a whole bunch of programming out there, too, that you probably could share with her school. Yes, because we're homeschooling. Um, we don't do sheet work or worksheets that much. Instead, we actually do presentations. So once we're studying a subject, we don't just make like a sheet work or find the sheet work. We actually make presentations on the subject. Now I've seen some of their presentations and they're very good. It was just an idea of mine that I um that popped up. How can I how can you help someone? Uh that's very far. Angeline. If if um, Samuel or anybody else has um, digital stuff they want to share with you, are you able to show the student something in your classroom on a screen, even if they don't have their own computers to use? Yes. So uh, we could do the projector or we use the uh, television, the uh, uh wireless television we use it like the same way i use my phone we connect it to the internet and it works that sounds great yeah all right well samuel's got your email address now and he's yeah. got your website so he can think about that some more and talk to his student groups that he's part of and see what they might come up with that they can share with you to share with your class. I think they would think it's really cool to have someone else, you know, other students from other countries 
that are showing them things too. Not just teachers. Not that teachers aren't great, because they are. But sometimes, yeah. sometimes they like to listen to students their own age too. Yes, and they are so amazing. I uh, who have had some of my students here with me on this show, but I couldn't get them because today is Sunday uh, in Liberia and is a weekend day and most of them are far away from the school. So, yeah. So next time for, for the April Global Innovation Field Trip, do have them do some short little videos for you. And you can you can either send them to us for us to play or you can play some of their videos of whatever they want to present. We have students around the world that come on the show and not everybody has easy access to Wi-Fi. And so sometimes they'll just create little videos that we can share. Um, and it's, yes. it's just about as good. I mean, we love to promote the students in any way that we can. So we're happy to do that. Yes, yes. We love to do that. That would be a great thing to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. Any other questions, Sam? Uh, no, but, um, um, from our last presenter, they presented about, um, uh, plastic bottle chairs. I was, um, thinking about, like, possible, um, collaborations with that. Plastic yeah. Bottle chairs. Yeah, myself saw that presentation and I was thinking about the same. That will help our students a lot because most of them are below five years old. Mm hmm Yeah. Hi, Wynn, I see that you joined us. Did you want to, did you want to ask a question of Angeline? Actually, I was supposed to be here for the match, but I actually came at the wrong time. I came oh, no. Early. That's it. Well, now that you're here, you have to ask Angelina a question. Do you know she started a whole school? Oh, wow. Well, now, what? She started a school? A whole school. And she's got like 100 <laughs> kids now. It's getting very crowded. Actually, and I have one question. Okay. But I'm going to rename first. <laughs> that's okay ask your question because we don't want her to run out of time okay so so um my question is is it hard starting that school it was is it what were your challenges that you faced as you were joining that school what did you face what are the problems you had when you were trying to found the school and when you were trying to when you're trying to fix everything and when you're trying to get the kids, what were your challenges that you faced on the way? Okay, so there were a couple of challenges when I was starting this initiative. And even now, there's some major challenges as well, but initially, one of the challenges were the uh, finances, and getting space and also convincing the parents to trust our initiative yes so we started with two students two kids and we could not lay our hands on all of the materials that we needed to use so getting different materials without money it was a big challenge, but we had to work with people. Some people had this material and they were not using it. So we had to go to them, talk to them, raise funds, you know, use all kinds of strategies, their fundraiser, donation, um, community cleanup, where we go in various community cleaning up and people donate to us. So that was how we solved some of those uh, financial problems or getting equipment for our centers okay thank you for that answer thank you yeah that's a welcome. really big question 
I want to see if somebody has their hand up in the attendees and I want to see if they have a question for you. Give me just a second. And our next um, presenter is not here yet. So I'm not worried about the time if you're okay, Angeline. Okay. Uh, hold on just a second. I'm. I'm not sure what their question was. They had their hand up, but I asked if they had a question and they might have disappeared temporarily. So we'll see if they come back. It sounds crazy there. All right. I guess they don't have a question then, Angeline. So we we thank you very much. If I get any feedback from somebody to help our with our challenge of helping us figure out how to get materials from the rest, rest of the world to Liberia more easily, then I will reach out to you and to Paul because we've been trying to solve, solve this for a while. And so I will let you know. Oh, I have actually thought of something real quick. Okay. Uh do you have print? Do you have printers in your school? Uh, printers. Yeah. Yes, we do have it. Oh, then we people or me can like send you, like worksheets or, um, the some kind of uh presentation that can work as something a student can read and answer. To you and you can print it since you're using traditional. Yes, we will appreciate that. That's interesting. Okay, I, um, the person that was going to ask a question earlier, I'm promoting in. We'll see if they make it all the way here. Okay, so greater grace. If you have a question for Angeline. Yes, please. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Okay. So uh, I think what Angela is going through, uh, because I've been in her shoe before, I know what really she is talking about. Uh, I, am, I am just here to recommend her to do is her best, whatever he's doing to uplift the image of the children, she continue to do it. And I know sometimes uh, things will be better. With the, uh, the things we are doing, we can't uh, do it from here and maybe ship it to their place. But uh, we can take her through how she can prepare the plastic, uh, the plastic chairs, the plastic tables, how you can do, collect the plastics and use it to make tables and even chair for the little ones. We are, we are here, we are ever ready to collaborate with her and then take her through that so that she can do it from the end there. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um... Did you see, and I'm sorry, a Greater Grace, I know that's not your name. I think that's the name of the program, right? And I wasn't on when you presented, so I'm sorry. What is your name? Ms. Maxwell, the Maxwell. STEM facilitator. Okay. Did you see Angeline's um, website address when it came up earlier? Uh, not. Okay. So, um, Angeline, what is the name of the site again? Is canovaschool.com. Uh, canovaschool.com. Don't type it. 